Father God, give me eyes to see. Give me ears to hear. Give me a mind that is clear of all the clutter in this world. <clears throat> Provide for me your wisdom. Yes, Lord. And Lord God, provide words in my mouth. Not according to my will, but according to your will. Yes, Lord. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Amen. Thank you. God never ceases to amaze me. You want the title? I usually don't put titles on. How's that? <laughs> the title is The Presence of God. The presence of God. Thank you. Amen. Exodus 3. Verses 1 through 17. Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 17. Now Moses was keeping the flock of his father in law, Jethro. I think we missed this next part just a little bit. Everyone's the priest yeah. of Midian. Yeah. John just is just normal old plain father-in-law. He was the priest of Midian. And he led his flock to the west side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in the flame. Now let's be clear here. The angel of the Lord did not speak to him. The angel of the Lord just appeared to him. In a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. He looked, and behold, the bush was burning and yet not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn aside to see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. I'm going to turn aside from keeping watch over the flock. Because there's the angel of the Lord. There's a fire burning, and it's not burning up that bush. We'll come back to that in a minute. <clears throat> Verse 4 And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called him out, called to him out of the bush. Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. And he said, Do not come near. Take your sandals off your feet. For the place which you are standing is holy ground. And he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Let me just stop there. Manifest presence of God. Don't know who here has ever experienced the manifest presence of God. Not everyone has. Because there's the presence of God, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, which is the omnipresence, but then there's the manifest presence mm -hmm. of God. Amen. And 
And when you're in that manifest presence of God, you are on holy ground. Mm -hmm. I don't remember how many years ago it was. Obviously, it was probably well over 20 years ago because my wife and I were attending Aldi Church. And God laid upon my heart to go and pray every morning before vacation Bible school. Had a men's group that I met with uh, on a regular basis. We, we met around 5, 30, 6 o'clock in the morning once a week. And, and um, I mentioned it to them. So anybody want to join me? See, it was what God had called me to do. So I went every morning. I don't remember, you know, if it was the third morning or the fourth morning, but I would start downstairs in the church and I would pray over every room that was going to be used for Bible study or for the Bible school. And I, and I would go up the stairs. If you ever been to Aldi, they've got these two long staircases that kind of rounded shape to go up to the sanctuary. And then I would <laughs> go into the sanctuary to pray over that area because that's where they would start with music and songs every morning. And that's where they would end each day at the end of vacation Bible school, gathering kids together again. And I went, and this is the truth, I went strolling in. And God physically stopped me in my tracks. I'm a big man. <laughs> But there was no going forward. And at the same time, as I reflect back on it, there was no moving back. God physically stopped me there. And whether it was a clear, audible voice, it was clearly audible in my head. He said, stop. You're not walking into your bathroom. See, I got caught up with doing, I'm doing what God wants me to do. Woohoo! I'm just going to stop. This is not your bathroom. Amen. This is my sanctuary. Amen. This is a place that was set aside to stand before me. And he said, take your shoes off. Mm -hmm. I took my shoes off. And every week, for about the next six weeks, every time I went to go into the sanctuary, I took my shoes off because God said, I'll let you know when it's time to put your shoes back on. Amen. Amen. I was standing in a holy place, not because of what I was doing, because of the presence of God. Yes. And that manifest presence of God, we have no idea when God is going to show up like that. Amen. Can we demand of God that he shows up like that? No. no. It's his call. Just like it was his call, the exact timing of sending Jesus, his son, mm -hmm. to be God with us. But here's the difference. I can wait 
in expectation. Because you never know when the manifest presence of God is going to show up. Did I walk into this place this morning in expectation? Well, guess what? Because I was preaching on it, I was a little more expecting to actually happen. And I no doubt think you all are aware of the presence of God in this place this morning. Amen. It's that omnipresent part. But how often do we just stroll in? It becomes a commonplace thing. It becomes a rote thing. Just like we've been discussing in, in the men's Bible study about communion. And the liturgies of different churches. They are, for the, for, for the most part, they are scriptural based. But the problem is, at a point in time, they became something we just strolled through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when the Spirit of God, when we're seeking God and recognizing that the Spirit of God is with us, and that God is omnipresent, the Christ that is in me, the Holy Spirit working through me I get to pull back and go wow I get the presence of God but this does not fall into place without us being purposeful in seeking God Like I said, are we expecting? Are we working through an expectation? Are we expectantly waiting? Are we waiting in hope? Are we waiting in the mindset that God is right here with us anyway and that He might actually make? His manifest presence known to us. And, and let me let me clarify something. If you've never experienced the manifest presence of God, it's not that there's something wrong with your belief in God or with your salvation in Jesus Christ. Because as I said earlier, it's not something for me just to say, Lord. Get here right now. <laughs> he will reveal himself when he is ready. God will. God will. God's will. One of the things that stands out to me um, and I, I will tell you that I, I kind of been going back and forth with this. Um, and what God had laid on my heart brought back to my mind um, a small book I read. And I very rarely reference books. But if you have not read this, it's a very short read. In fact, my wife knows what kind of a slow reader I am. And, um, but it's a 90-page little book. 
and um, actually right now and just in the last two days I'm on page 70 around 70 okay this book is by brother Lawrence and it's called the practice of the presence of God and all I, I haven't really looked up a lot of the details about brother Lawrence I used to know it a little better but um, Basically, he was a brother serving in a monastery-type setting 300 years ago. But he talks about practicing the presence of God. See, I can't expect to get any better at something if I'm not willing to practice it. There's not a person here who would take a child out on 130 for their first time trying to learn how to ride a bike. Here you go, go for it. But don't we get complacent? Don't we get, and I'm talking for myself, Let this, I want to be very clear, um, when I stand here before you, it's not because I've got it all together. Not that I've, I've worked out this practice and I'm going to walk you through it this morning, ha ha. Um, but practicing the presence of God. I see Lenny this morning, I think, as we were talking about one time he talked about when he, he's doing jobs and how he takes time to write down all the specifications for it and then he prays over it. Mm. Practice, that's practicing the presence of God. But do we even practice the presence of the more simple things? I'm going to come back to Brother Lawrence. So. That's a judge. Yeah. God's going. It's Brother Lawrence. Brother Lawrence. That can't happen today. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. So, where I took you at first was talking about the manifest presence of God and Job and Moses being there in that manifest presence. And we would all agree that God is omnipresent. He's here whether I recognize he's here or not. <laughs> and this omnipresence is placed before us, I, I, I think really the, the psalm that always comes to my mind is Psalm 139. I'm going to go there. I'm going to read a few verses. Starting at verse 1. Psalm 139, verse 1. O oh Lord, you have searched me, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise, and you perceive my thoughts. Now this says from afar. But let's keep going. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O oh Lord. You hem me in. You hem me me in. Now, we know hem on a pair of pants or hem on a skirt is that sewn circular thing that is complete. Because anybody's ever had to hem come out of the pants or the skirt know what happens when it's not complete or becomes incomplete. You hem me in. 
behind and before you have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. Amen. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, and if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Amen. Your hand will hold me fast. Amen. I say, surely the darkness will hide me, and the light become night around me. Even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day, for the darkness is light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, and I know it full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. And your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained, all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, O oh God. How vast is the sum of them. Were I to count them, they would outnumber the grains of sand. When I awake, I am still with you. If only you would slay the wicked, O God. Away from me, you bloodthirsty men. They speak of you with evil intent. Your adversaries misuse your name. Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord? And abhor those who who rise up against you. I have nothing but hatred for them. I count them my enemies. Here we go. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. I know for many of you that's not the first time you've heard that or it won't be the last time you hear it as you attend church in different places. But I'm going to ask this question of myself. You ask it of yourself if you need to. Have I become complacent about what it really means? just this psalm itself. Do I call this to my recollection? Do I say to God, I know you are true to your word. You will not do things that are contrary to your word. And if I'm honest and say, Lord, search me, you will do it. Right to say, Lord, search me. Search me a little deeper. See, there's one thing that we need to recognize with this omnipresence of God. God didn't choose to be omnipresent for us to ignore him. For us to go day by day, step by step, in our own paths. We're still going to do it. Not don't get me wrong. We're going to we're going to mess up and and step out and go. Oh, man, I just messed that all up. But if we're working, walking a little closer in our minds and in our hearts, and more purposefully or practicing the presence of God, we're going to recognize a little faster when we've stepped across the line. Such little things that we, that I at times become complacent about. You know, I've got my phone, and it's laying on the back there. And so I've got God's word in my hand, 
at any given point in time. I can do a search and find what I'm thinking about and, and searching for and have his word right there with me. Or I could carry my Bible with me. I could, again, am I complacent or am I purposeful? Am I seeking God's presence when it's convenient? Or am I practicing the daily, moment by moment, presence of God? One of the things in this little book it talks about, I think they're, they're describing the first little couple of things, talks about someone else describing his meet a couple of his meetings with Brother Lawrence. And he said that Brother Lawrence at times by some was considered childish or childlike because he didn't let his practicing the presence of God with him moment by moment to interfere with what he thought other people might think. And a couple of places in here it talks about, and he would just all of a sudden start to dance. Amen. I was thinking about this, you know, when was the last time, and we talk about walking with God, when was the last time I skipped along with God? Amen. My knees don't handle the skipping as well as they used to. When did I just have that? I mean, think back to when you were a kid and you skipped across the grass. Finding that type of pleasure in being in the presence of the Almighty God. And practicing that presence so that no matter what the circumstance or the situation might be, I can dance in His presence. I can skip in His presence. I'm refusing to say a certain word this morning about situation in our society. <laughs> And I'm going to challenge you all to try for the rest of the day not to mention that word. We slip into talking about it because that's what's in our face, but don't you know that God is right here in our faces too? Yes. Amen. There's a spot in this book where it talks about, you know, I know when I've turned from his face because... I'm quickly in the wrong place and God reminds me to turn around because he's right there. Amen. I know we're all tired of it. Guess what? There's something that we can pursue that we will, if we honestly pursue, not get tired of. You ever get tired of just worshiping? No. no. And Brother Lawrence talks about he was assigned kitchen duty. Wait. For the first 10 years. <laughs> and he said, Amen. I didn't, didn't want, didn't like had no desire to do kitchen duty. But I found my peace in practicing the presence of the Lord in that task. That it got to a point he didn't mind kitchen duty anymore. It wasn't something he volunteered for but it wasn't something he dreaded because he practiced the presence of God in the midst 
of that circumstance. See, God tells us through his word repeatedly over and over again that he desires to be closer and present with us all the time. Gospel of John, 14th chapter, 23rd verse. Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. John 14, verse 23. What have I said? God cannot be contrary to his word. If I am sincere, purposeful, desiring to practice the presence of God, He's right here to fulfill it. <laughs> it's a struggle, isn't it? Well, but you know, how can I do that in this situation? How can I do that in that situation? I can tell you right now. <sighs> it's a struggle in the midst of anesthesia. Amen. <laughs> Just write it down. <laughs> How can I practice the presence of God? Mm. Taking out to the doctor, sleeping with her, holding her through seizures. Just like them. Amen. See, I think the questions my wife just wrote are the questions that each one of us can write down. Amen. And if we don't have the answer, we have a God who says, I'll tell you how. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Go to the first chapter of James. Pastor mentioned this a couple weeks ago. First chapter of James. So let's start at verse 2 because it leads into what God will provide. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. We don't like that, though, do we? Mm-hmm. Lord, haven't I been tested enough? <laughs> well, obviously, not. I have not because I'm not persevering as God would as he desires me to. Amen. As he desires me to, to just to dig in a little closer with him. Amen. I'm going to raise my hand. How many of you have reeled against God about something this week? Mm-hmm. Lord, haven't I had enough of this already? Yes, <sighs> do I... Do I understand the joy that God is present with me during that circumstance. He doesn't leave me to flail about, even though sometimes we think we feel that way. God, we flail on the back here. You you, you hear? (laughs) Not because he's not there. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, when Ever you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any 
of you lacks wisdom, or in a sense, Lord, I don't know, see how I can do this. Is that not lacking the wisdom to do it? Or to know how? If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to him. He doesn't scold me when the answer's right in front of me. He does not scold me when I'm like, Lord, I know we worked through this before, but I'm struggling to remember how we worked through this before. Let me see if I can find this. There's lots of good little tidbits in here. But one of the parts was where he was talking about when he first came to his faith in the Lord. Basically, he said that he struggled with the immensity of his sin. But then he came to the realization of how much worse sin in him and the sin in the world around him would be if God's hand was not on it. And then he came to a place of peace knowing that he had a heavenly father who would forgive those sins. And with practicing God's presence with him, he knew when he stepped into the sin and he could just immediately turn and say, Father God, forgive me. He said, I learned not to, at least this is the impression I got from it, I don't know if it says this exactly, but he learned not to have great depth of um, remorse, even though he was remorseful for what he had done. But he learned how to rejoice in recognizing that sin and having the availability of God right there to go, okay. Let's not talk about Move forward with me. Amen. Moving forward with God. Practicing his presence. Throughout this little book, he talks about how he just praised God for his love. Praised God for his mercy. That he praised God for his grace. He would thank him over and over. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for who you are. And then to continually be able to recognize God in all circumstances. Because he was practicing. He was practicing the presence of God and that prayerful conversation in all things. He said, even when I didn't have anything to say to God, I could praise Him. That's right. I could, even if it wasn't a request or a issue or a problem, praising God all the time. Remembering to just say, thank you. Amen. Thank you. See, we continue to strive under our own power. God's word says, be still and know that I am God. There's a version that says, 
Cease striving. Stop. Be still. Be still. And the joy that comes recognizing that He is God. He loves us so deeply, regardless of how much we mess up. <coughs> he loves us. 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 He will never stop loving us. His love is everlasting. Amen. It goes on forever and ever. And He will love us through eternity. Yes, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And we will love Him through eternity. Yes. Because of our right standing with Him in Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. So if we're going to love Him throughout eternity, why shouldn't we start loving Him a little bit more right now? Amen. We can experience a little glimpse of what heaven's going to be like right now. And the circumstances that we live in day by day, if we depend on Him, they are not going to control us. Amen. Our circumstances, many times, control our reactions because we're reacting outside of God. Yeah. We're at, reacting outside of that relationship with Him. When I went strolling down that aisle, I was being obedient to what he called me to do, but I was acting outside of my relationship with him, and he had to stop me and put me back in place. Amen. Do you long for that manifest presence? stops you? Do we long to anticipate that? Do we do? Do we come here this morning anticipating? That he just shows up. It's because the truth this morning of God had really shown up in his manifest presence. We don't know. <laughs> this this up here that I did this morning would absolutely be not necessary. Amen. <laughs> but he is in our midst. He is present. He desires that closeness of our relationship with him. As Dara was sharing, that small, small, <clears throat> intimate time with the Lord is very precious, is it not? How many say, yeah, amen. Amen. amen? amen. How many want more of that? Amen. amen. And it's not just on Sunday morning. It can be every day. That's right. This is when we gather together. Can you imagine the expectation if we all individually experience this on a daily basis and then come together on Sunday? Amen. That's right. <laughs> Multiply. Hallelujah. Presence of God. 